Hey everybody, how you doing today? This is Sean Thinjetti, and this is a new series I'm going to be doing right now on my channel called Comics is Gate Crashers. And one of the things about it I wanted to do with this first episode was to talk about something I've been talking about on my streams lately. That is that pop culture does not come from our institutions. It doesn't come from our corporations and it doesn't come from our academic institutions either. It tends to come from people who are outside of both of those things. And for every one example you could point to where anything that you could deem as pop culture comes from an institution, there are probably a hundred other examples of it coming from other places. Now, the thing I wanted to talk about in specific was comic books and how that relates to Comicsgate, how that relates to independent comics and how that relates to where we find ourselves today. But before we do that, I got to make sure I talk about this. This is my comic book, my Comicscape book, No Sparrow the Cryptwalker. It is funding right now in demand on Indiegogo. And let's take a look at that campaign right now and see where we're at. And there we go. We have got this campaign right now. It is almost to 20K. Thank you guys so much for your support. We're less than $2,000 away from that. So if you have not backed it yet, it's got all kinds of of uh, all kinds of great perks in it. And those perks include original artwork as one of our featured tiers. And those are $325. They are head sketches. For those of you guys interested in what those look like, I have a couple of examples of those kicking around here. But this is a head sketch I did of Shane Davis's uh, character. Let me see if I can switch the camera back here. This is an example I, of what I did for a head sketch of Shane Davis's character from Inglorious Rex. So just to give you a sense of what you're paying for, for $325, you're getting a steal of a piece of artwork. And since the original pages are not for sale, that is your opportunity. There's only three of those left. And uh, if you are interested in one, move now to get one, because I don't know if I'm going to be doing those again for another campaign, certainly not as many as I'm doing for this one. So yeah, make sure you go and back Nosfero the Crypt Walker, available now on Indiegogo. The link is in the description here. And like I said, you can get art, uh, you can get uh, art books one and two as an add-on tier right now. All of those have sold out. But if you buy a copy of the signed comic book in print. You can also get those um, first and second first uh, first and second art books I did and their first and second printings. You can also get um, and you can see everything that's sold out here, a ink head sketch inside of your book. So I will personalize the book inside of the sketch page. For those of you guys who don't know what my books look like, this is an example of what uh, art book two looks like here. Hang on one second. And there you go. So this is an example of, oops, I got a ring light on, don't need that. This is an example of art book two. This is what my stuff looks like when it's printed, glossy cover, very heavy stock pages. And right in here, there's a uh, signatory page. And that signatory page is where I'm going to both sign books. And if you back it at the head sketch level, I'm going to do a ink head sketch right in there, nicely detailed so that it's personalized for you for all time. And, uh, I can't tell you how fun of a tier it is for me to uh, to have there. So it's a way for you to have your, your art book personalized to you with a unique piece of artwork that's drawn into it of a monster or creature, whatever um, uh, is on my mind that day. So again, make sure you back those tiers if you haven't yet. So here's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking a little bit about pop culture and comics. Last night when I was talking about my work and I was working on Osfero, I started talking about probably one of the biggest comic book phenomenon to come out of uh, comics and into pop culture in the last uh, several decades, going all the way back now. Gosh, we're talking almost probably 50 years. It's one of the biggest pop culture phenomenon to happen. Hard to imagine that it's been that long. And that is a book that was created, like so many comic books are created, by either one or two individuals, oftentimes two individuals, but sometimes it's one, 
um, working in a place, in a house, in an apartment, wherever they may find themselves, that is not much more extravagant than wherever you're probably sitting right now. All it takes is some imagination, some drive, some determination, and the right skills, and you get something like this. Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It is a black and white comic book that was printed at an unusual size that kind of hit the comic shops at the right time in a similar time to the one that we're living in right now, where the indie scene was where it was at, where anything was possible. That's the time period that we're in right now. And what did it take to make one of the biggest pop culture phenomenon of the past 50 years, half a century at this point? It took um, two guys sitting in an apartment with an old style of working, which was on graphics duo shade and 40 pages, a 40 page homage book to the things they love, Jack Kirby, uh, Frank Miller's Daredevil, and doing all of the things that we do, sketching these things out, the layout pages, and then putting in the time it takes. Was the lettering perfect? No. Was the artwork perfect? No. But what they created was pop culture perfection. Now, if you can point to me or point you know, at the college or the corporation, that has put something out that has become this level of a phenomenon that has come close to making the amount of money that this has made, I would like to see it. But I don't think there's a great example. But let's put all that other stuff aside. Superman, Jerry Siegel, Joe Schuster. Batman, where you've got Bill Finger and Bob Kane. You've got so many different people who have come together. Stan Lee, Jack Kirby who come together and create these things and they make the industry, they make pop culture pop. What happens when these, these properties, whether it's George Lucas coming out of Modesto, California, all of these people are not from the places that we look to for our pop culture and entertainment right now. And that is why it's less pop culture and more fizzle culture. That's why you're starting to see these giant properties that we thought were indestructible, how short they live once the key people who are responsible for creating them are out of the scene, the stuff doesn't happen. So here's the thing I want to ask you guys. If this is the thing you want to be a part of from the ground up, why are you looking for pop culture at the big corporations? It's not even worth the mind numbing level that it may distract you for a short period of time. You're much better taking the time to go to something, a website like CG now or look at Comicsgate projects like Nosfero the Crypt Walker, which is the link again is in the description for your next level of entertainment and to get in on something from the ground level, to not go to where the, the culture is already on the discount rack rotting away, but to go to where the culture is born, that rich, life vivifying, inspirational source of creativity, which are your individual creators that you're now meeting on YouTube and you're meeting in places like Comicsgate. So I just wanted to send that video out to you guys today. I hope you're having a great morning or a great afternoon or a great evening or a great good night wherever you're located on this planet. If you haven't backed Nosfero yet, what are you waiting for, guys? Do you hear that wind outside right now? Those are the winds of change. Get in there, back Nosfero the Crypt Walker, and remember this. Two guys in a place called Northampton, Massachusetts, created a 40-page comic book that they had no thought was going to go past that, and it ended up changing pop culture and enriching the imaginations of a whole generation of young people and adults who just love quirky, cool, amazing entertainment. That's what's happening in CG right now. So remember, we are the people who make the entertainment. Be more than a consumer. Go out and back a Comicscape project today and make something happen that has a chance of rewarding you back has a chance of inspiring you being different and not being that same old same old of them telling you the same story over and over again remember the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results i don't know if you think that a corporation or an institution could have come up with something called teenage mutant ninja turtles where four turtles were named after renaissance painters but i don't think that they could because it's not generated by an algorithm and that's not how they think, and it's not how it works, and it's not intellectualized, and it's just raw fun. It's life, and art has to come from people who are alive, not people who are draining the life out of everything through psychoanalysis and uh, grievance culture. So 
This is the book. This is the art. This is what life looks like, guys. This is No Sparrow the Crypt Walker. Watercolor, gouache, vampires, werewolves, and everything that we love about pop culture. That is what this is about, guys. So remember, don't have your culture fizzle. Have your culture pop. Back at Comicscape Book today. Stop going to the discount bin for your art and entertainment. My name is Sean Thinjetti. This is Comics Gate Crashers, and this is episode one. Get your pop culture from the source, people. Nosfero the Crypt Walker. Back it now. Have a great rest of the day, guys, and peace. There'll be more of this stuff soon. Kick off! Ain't got nothing! Oh, yeah. Nosferu is a supernatural hero that is a cross between the Shadow, Peter Cushing's Abraham Van Helsing, and Lovecraft's Henry Armitage. The lone surviving member of the Secret Order, he is sworn to battle a cult of vampires dedicated to opening the door to the eldritch gods they worship. Striking from his crypt lair deep within an impenetrable mire, Nosferu collects the cult's various grimoire and artifacts in an attempt to learn the means of defeating them. Supernatural abilities allow Nosferu to summon Phantomus, a giant phantom hound that can travel through the neither to and from any location when needed. Nosferu's world is forever changed when he rescues a beautiful young maiden named Laurel from one of the cult's vile, sacrificial rituals. Nosferu the Cryptwalker Volume 1 is my third Indiegogo campaign and will be a fully painted and lavishly illustrated pulp adventure story. Sensational, vivid, and uncompromisingly aspirational storytelling with an edge. Don't miss your chance to back Nosferu the Cryptwalker Volume 1, available for a limited time only on Indiegogo.